Hey everyone, I'm here today for a short review on an old book that I read in the late summer of 2022, last year. Uh, I guess you could call it a classic, although it's really more of a classic by affiliation than one that people recognize by name itself. But I only saw a couple of YouTube reviews for this one, uh, the rest of them being reviews either for some perfume or a particular brand of protein powder. So this book, The Black Tulip, is notable partly because it was written by Alexandre Dumas, uh, the prolific 19th century writer who brought us such classics as The Count of Monte Cristo and The Three Musketeers, both of which I've read and highly recommend, but also both of which are astonishingly long, especially The Count of Monte Cristo, but that, in my opinion, both have enough material to really be worth the length. On the contrary, this book, The Black Tulip, is one that I'd estimate to be about an eighth the length of the Count of Monte Cristo, and yet even the six hours that it took me to listen to the audiobook already felt like more than the story really deserved. And much like The Pearl by John Steinbeck, which I also read in 2022, um, The Black Tulip feels like a sort of simple parable, uh, very different from Steinbeck's expansive East of Eden or Dumas' The Count of Monte Cristo, which are long but full of intricate characters, complex themes, and uh, really involved character development. And although The Pearl and The Black Tulip are both okay as stories, they both just feel to me more like the kind of story you'd find in a book of short stories, rather than the material of a short novel or novella. Yes, they bring in a slightly wider variety of characters than you'd see in a typical short story, and yes, there are enough little twists and turns that it would be hard to cut down the story too aggressively, but they don't necessarily pack enough of any one thing or do it well enough for us to get really excited about them. Also, before I characterize the Pearl too much with this story, I will note that the Pearl is about half the length, so, so the lack of real development in that story is maybe a little bit more justifiable there. But you see, The Black Tulip is fundamentally another one of Dumas' adventure novels, but it's one that takes place almost entirely within the walls of a prison cell, and that's being constantly interrupted by other things that Dumas tries to fit in here. At some points, The Black Tulip is a romance novel written for an era where the true love at first sight was perhaps more compelling than it is today. At other times, it's a historical fiction, such as in the first sixth or so of the book, which describes some political plottings against William, the Prince of Orange, that do form the backstory for our characters, but are really only tangentially related to the rest of the book. And I mean it was historical even at the time of its writing, as it deals with events that took place in the 17th century in what's today Holland or the Netherlands, um, two centuries even before the writing of this book in the mid-19th century. And these are the kind of chapters that often worked better in The Count of Monte Cristo because they still formed a small part of the overall action. But here, the first chapter, other than setting the overall tone of the book, just isn't really quite as critical to our understanding of what is to come. It does belong there within some context of the story, and I won't even claim that it's not interesting, but it's only partially effective, I think, in how it is tied together with everything else. And occasionally the novel is other things, even an ode to botany, although here its role is more to reveal to us the character of our protagonist Cornelius von Berly than to actually provide us with the instructions on how to grow tulips. But unsurprisingly, if you've read Dumas before, we get a fair amount of botanical instruction too. Lastly though, and maybe more to the point, uh, this book is the character study of a man, wrongly imprisoned for a political crime he didn't commit, who is torn from his passion of growing tulips, but finds something else to live for when he meets the jailer's beautiful daughter, Rosa, and falls in love with her. The only thing is, at least viewed through a modern lens, Cornelius von Berle isn't a particularly interesting or remarkable hero, nor does it feel like we have all that much to learn from him. I mean, yes, the story is kind of just one of these classic struggles between good and evil in which you just have to root for whomever you're told through description is the good and assume that good will triumph in some form in the end. But other than that, Cornelius doesn't really give us all that much to love about him. We're just meant to be sympathetic to him because he's unfairly suffering. He comes across as just an okay guy, but also occasionally a bit brutish and selfish, whose entire life's purpose has come to be defined by one thing, growing tulips. Even when he meets the beautiful Rosa and supposedly falls in love with her, he still has a hard time putting her needs before his beloved black tulip. And although at first I thought maybe this would be a big point in the ending of the story, like he, he has to choose between his obsession with gardening and his obsession with Rosa, no such decision will be made by the end of the story. He'll get both, and actually all the evidence will suggest that if it really had come down to choosing one or the other, he would have gone for the tulip. Thus, the ending feels a little bit unsatisfying because although it feels like a little bit of a redemption for his wrongful imprisonment, it doesn't feel like he's had to willingly accept uh, any sacrifice here as it was hinted he might. He's simply able to get everything he wants, including his own freedom, 
It's as if the moral is that suffering in itself is virtuous, and that sufferers can eventually expect to be rewarded unconditionally, rather than that suffering can give way to some sort of personal inner transformation or change for the better. Oh yeah, and the jealous neighbor who got Cornelius wrongly imprisoned, he instantly just drops dead at the end of the book when he learns his ruse has been discovered. End of story. So yeah, I guess some people do consider this a beautiful tale of love and struggle, but no. The Count of Monte Cristo is all that and more, but The Black Tulip is one you can probably skip unless you have some particular reason to go for it. So thanks for watching this short review, and happy reading.